How wonderful to be starting out again on a trail ride this year with Henry and Flora, my trusted companions. Turnip came along too. Now that he is fully grown and Trudy is busy with their puppies at home, I decided it is time to let him be part of our bigger adventures and spend some extra special time with me. I think he's very much ready for it. This year I wanted to explore the Dingle Peninsula in County Kerry and we are setting off from Ventry near Dingle Town on the south side. Some established long distance trail riders would just smirk at us holiday trail riders because what is a big adventure for us would seem like a brief walk in the park for them. But with our busy life at home, trying to make a living from our land and many animals to look after, I'm ever so delighted to at least get away a few days to get a small taste of adventure. Hi guys! On the first day, as it is already mid-afternoon by the time we get to set off, I plan to follow the sleighhead drive all the way to Dunquin. This is just an ordinary tarmac road along the cliffs, but I don't mind as it is easy riding, no map reading required and easy for the horses to plod along whilst I enjoy the fantastic views. Very relaxing and restorative after such a busy, exhausting summer of work at home. I always bring foldable water containers in case there's no stream or lake the animals can drink from. But this part of the world has an abundance of little streams running from the hills into the sea. No worries so far. All right, turn up the chance to drink now. Plenty of water in the middle of the road. I'm glad that Flora and Henry don't seem to be bothered by heights. Some cliff drops are very steep and I'm glad for the little stone wall bordering the road. I got a very kind offer of a field near Dunquin for the night. I was told to look out for a bay and a skewbald horse. That's the field we could stay in and here they are. Henry and Flora very much appreciate the safe and comfy surroundings after a sweaty start into our ride. Of course the Bay and Skewbald had to check out us visitors and straightaway told us where we could and couldn't go and we turn all up, settled turn soon. Up, turn up, don't join in. There you go. Just look in. Oh no! What happened? Oh, oh, the pot slid off the cooker. Oh, and half of it got spilled. A little bit left. Oh, Laura, no, no. Hot. And most of it is spilled already. Go away. Go and eat grass, Flora. Go on. Luckily, I always bring extra rations and after a few toasted marshmallows, I didn't have to go to bed hungry either. Hi, Horsey. Morning. Oh, right in the water. No, no. Go on. Where's Turnip gone? <laughs> turnip. I don't know what to do. I'm supposed to defend me against other creatures. <laughs> so, looks like a beautiful day, but um, very, very midgy already, and it's not even. It's not even um, seven o'clock yet. So I think I have to go back to the closed-up tent to enjoy my tea. Ugh. So I retreated to the tent for tea and porridge. But soon enough, the sun came up from behind the hills and the midges went away. Flora and Henry were still on home time schedule, approaching my tent at their usual breakfast time, demanding food now. 
I find you your food, shall I? Going on a solo trail ride with your own horse sounds so terribly romantic and special, and yes, it is. But actually, a lot of the time I think about food and drink for the horses and whether they are well and happy. Flora and Henry ate a lot of greenery all night, so they shouldn't be starved. Yet, they sweated a lot yesterday, so I top up their bodies with some mineral and vitamin-rich feed. These processed concentrated cubes mean, though, that I must find plenty to drink for the horses very soon after their meal, or I risk a colic. I had crossed a small stream yesterday evening, just before we stopped. So, firstly, we did a detour back there to top up the horse's fluids. Another stunningly bright and warm day means that the horses start sweating pretty soon into our ride again. So, I must keep looking for more water as we ride along. Flora always starts changing her coat from summer to winter hair at the end of August, so she's extra hot, poor Can thing. Keep up? We'll stop at the top, shall we? We try an off-road route over the hills, which was recommended to us by a local. Ooh. There we go. Oh, other way. After passing the first unlocked gate, it all looks very promising. I find maps are great for getting an idea where I am and where I want to go. But for off-road riding, the best and sometimes only way is to take the time and courage to just test a route that a local or someone who's been riding in the area before recommended. This means risking a locked gate or two somewhere in the process, or finding a trail overgrown or washed away. But sometimes I find real gems that way, which I wouldn't have wanted to miss, like this one. Once in a while, even I interpret the map and the surroundings wrong. And suddenly we find ourselves in very boggy terrain no, with no track in sight, no track not safe for horses river. at all. Kind of fizzling out, isn't it? Whoop. Teeny tiny little track. But it turns out we went the wrong way anyway. But I get you out of this boggy place because that looks no good, does it? Well, not for horses anyway. Okay, sorry guys, wrong way. Oh, turnip. When we find the track again, we'll have a little break, okay? So, a big sigh of relief from me when I find our track again and we have a new attempt getting off this hill. Sometimes these hill tracks are ancient paths, but now lead through private land, so are more difficult to use by the public and as a result often get overgrown. This track here, clearly marked on the map, has even been blocked with a metal hurdle, but after some untying of tied up gates and tying them up again and crossing a field or two, hoping we won't meet boisterous cattle we find our way to the main road again. And the little off-road adventure was worth the excitement as we got to enjoy those beautiful hills close up rather than just from a distant road. The tide is out so we can cut across one of the many quiet bays to a beautiful lunchtime spot. On this trip, we are treated to absolutely stunning weather, almost too hot for riding along a tarmac road. 
but soon we get to the next beach. Turnip knows how to cool down in style. The tide has pushed in too far already and we can't get around those sharp rocks anymore. So we need to take a short detour through Balliferita before we find the most amazing camping spot on a beach. So we just had a swim on the beach behind us. There in the sea. Beautiful, lovely and warm and refreshing and everything. And we are going to have dinner next. All right, turn up. And the horses are having a rest. They are over there. And then I better find a spot to corral them in for the night and put the tent up. But it's only five o'clock, plenty of time. With all our luggage left at our camping spot, we go for a sunset ride on the beach and I take the horses for a last nighttime drink at a stream nearby. Camping is not everybody's thing, but I absolutely love it. It's not all that comfortable most of the time, but hearing my horses happily munch and snore very close to me during the night is lovely. And with Turnip curled up next to me in the tent, I feel lucky to be part of this great little gang of adventurers. If only there weren't some peculiar people out there who let off fireworks at half past two in the morning. Luckily, Henry and Flora stayed calm enough and didn't break through their electric fence in a Hi panic. Guys. Don't know what's going on over there. Can we see how the world is today outside? Well, the sea is still there anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You like it in the tent anyway. Nice and comfy. <laughs> One door. Okay. And, oh, somebody pulled the hemp pegs out here. Hi, Flora. Morning. Okay. Flora has a great attitude when it comes to food. She tried all night to push her nose underneath the tent because she felt that that's where the most tasty grass was growing. Being poked into your side by a horse's greedy nose through the tent cover in complete darkness is a special experience nobody should miss in their lifetime. Very misty today, lads. That's not just the camera. Wow. A group of dolphins came very close to the shoreline. What a special treat to watch, but almost impossible to capture on camera, of course. As always, packing up in the morning takes quite some time. I take great care to brush the horses down carefully. It would be best to wash them, of course, but when short of water, brushing also helps prevent unwanted saddle sores. This time is also a good opportunity for a quick health check. 
When you know your horses well, of course you notice very quickly if they are not okay. But just a quick look at their gums. They should be nicely pink and when squeezed quickly turn from pale to pink again. And the squeeze of a flap of skin on their neck, it should be elastic and firm, will tell you that your horse's circulation and hydration are okay. During all this, Turnip has a last minute snooze and then we're off again. This is a quiet off-road track which leads to a dead end, but it is too picturesque not to explore, so we choose the end of this glen as our lunchtime picnic spot. Despite a lot of research and speaking to various local people, I am unable to find a confirmed open route across the Mount Brandon mountain range. Landowners have become more reluctant to keep their lands accessible to the public and I am told there are locked gates along the way, unsuitable for travel by horse. So we say goodbye to these beautiful mountains and carry on by road, heading back to Ventry. We got let in on a secret hidden green road by a local which is open to the public, but not really advertised as such. A very enjoyable couple of kilometers. It is getting late and the fog has come back, wrapping us in a thick white layer. But I was told of a nice easy track across Mount Eagle and despite the weather and time I cannot resist. This might be a very silly decision, I tell myself, but I trust the local source and I know where we are going and the track looks solid and is only a three kilometer detour around the mountain. So my adventurous gene drives me and my team on. That's where we came from. When you are responsible for a team of animals, as well as yourself, such a decision weighs a bit heavier. I must say that riding with Trek Ireland for some years now has taught me an awful lot about assessing routes and reading maps and being aware of risks and safety when in unknown terrain. And I would recommend to anyone setting out on trail rides on their own to look into doing some trek training. It is a great sport and a super preparation for solo trail riding. Just down there where the sea is. That's where we'll find somewhere to stay. Come on. Last morning and we are up early riding down along the beach to the nearest stream for fresh water and a little paddle and wash in the sea. Then back to camp for breakfast and packing. Now lads, the usual packing up chaos. Last packing up for this summer. I decided that on our last day, we treat ourselves to a ride on Fomo Strand, one of the longest beaches in Ireland. 14 kilometers of unbroken sandy beach. And because there is no way to get there easily on horseback from where we are, 
we return to the van and drive across Connor Pass. A stop for a holiday ice cream at the top is a must, of course. This is the first money I spent in the last four days. It must have been the cheapest holiday ever, with no shops, stops, cafes or other costly attractions along the path. We're spoiled for choice. Don't know where to go first, lads. And all there's left today is to enjoy the vastness and sense of freedom on this fantastic long stretch of sand. Of course, other creatures enjoy what the beach has to offer too, mostly for culinary reasons. <laughs> turn it, we're done. Well done. Catch up. Turnip has been exceptional all these last four days. It was his first long trail ride and his stamina is amazing, trotting and running alongside us all the way. The ride just proved how he enjoys his bond with me and the sense of importance of following alongside as our watchdog. Finally time to go home lads. Always. 